Hey, this is Mike from GoCellPhoneRepair.com, and today I'm going to show you my method for replacing the screen on an iPod Touch 4th generation. You can see that this one has actually lost some of the functionality from the digitizer because it is pretty badly broken there up at the top. So uh, that's not all that uncommon, but we, we, what we're going to do is uh, take this screen off, plug another one in, and make sure that it will actually work. You can see I really can't even turn it off at this point. So we're going to go ahead and just start by heating up the glass. The majority of the adhesive on this is going to be at the top and the bottom where the thick black stripes are so you don't have to worry too much about the sides but we will run down those with the pry tool also you'll have to be careful at the what would be the top left hand corner of the device where there is a a wi-fi antenna that's actually glued to the glass with adhesive so we want to make sure we don't tear that and you'll see i'm just going very very shallow uh down here along the bottom we want to go as little as possible at a time and just carefully work our way around the side. Now I'm actually listening to this voice control go off because I can't get it to stop. But in any case, we'll work into a slightly thicker tool. I like to transition over to something that's not metal as soon as possible. Seems like it uh, prevents breakage and other problems from happening here. So again, we'll just kind of work around the bottom first. And you can actually get your pry tool in here and if the glass isn't shattered too much at the bottom you can kind of use a twisting motion to lift it up a little bit and again you see i did run down the sides and i'm pointing out the wi-fi antenna we want to be real careful here not to tear that you've actually got to get the glass off and in this case it's easy to see because of the way that the ipod broke but normally you're going to have to be very careful when you lift the top half off if you tear that wi-fi uh, antenna there you're going to have to replace that And I'm just going to pick out the pieces of glass here, and then you can kind of see what I'm talking about underneath. Why they chose to put adhesive on there, I do not understand. It's not going to help hold the lens on, but uh, it is what it is. So we'll work around down here, add a little bit more heat if it still seems sticky. Again, the adhesive at the top and the bottom are the strongest parts that you have to address. And of course, the home button will actually come out with the glass so don't worry about leaving that behind it's a little different than the iPhone 4 and um, you'll see I'm getting kind of under here to where I have a little bit of leverage and I can actually kind of lift it up and it will just open up from the bottom and at the top we'll have a cable that's still attached to the digitizer and you can see the LCD is actually plugged in there also where I'm pointing so we're going to disconnect that and then we're going to unwrap this foil stuff that kind of it goes around the part where the digitizer plugs in so be very careful right here you don't want to put any pressure on any other components we're just trying to disconnect the LCD and we'll kind of pull that aside you'll see a little metal bracket that fell out of the top we're gonna to save that for later and put it on the new screen Now, in order to get the digitizer unplugged, technically you can cut, uh, there's a series of screws here we're going to remove. Technically, you can cut that flat, um, flex cable, but we are going to have to um, lift that up anyways to get the new one in. So I'm going to go ahead and take everything off right now. So we'll start by removing the screws. And these are going to be a few different sizes, so make sure that you do keep them in order. And magnetizing will help a lot of the times, but you're still probably going to have to use some tweezers to get a couple of these out.
Now, this is where it does get a little bit tricky. You're going to have to be careful right here where I'm pointing out. There's a lot of adhesive under this metal panel. And that adhesive is actually stuck to the volume control flex cable. So if you're not careful, it's very easy to rip that out. So make sure that you apply some heat here. And what we're going to do is pry down in this corner. And again, make sure you get between this metal plate and the external speaker that's right underneath it. You don't want to pull the speaker out because it will also break the wires that attach it to the logic board. So I'm just very carefully going under here, very slowly. I'm lifting up. I'm not putting any downward pressure on the inside. And you can see I'm kind of stabilizing this flex cable here as I open up this panel because, again, we don't want to pull those wires out. And I'm just kind of gently working between the panel and those cables right now to try to get them separated without cutting. And then we can just lift that all up. And you can see all the components, including this little uh, metallic deal here that grounds, I believe it's to ground the camera. Uh, whatever it's for, a lot of people will just tear this when they take it out. I haven't seen it affect the performance of anything, regardless of what you do, but I try to keep it all in one piece. Uh, if you tear it, I wouldn't worry too much about it. It doesn't seem to have any detrimental effect, but I'm going to keep that in one place, which uh, might make it a little hard to see a few things that are going on here, so I'll try to keep that out of the way. But once we've got the metal plate removed, I'm going to heat up this little metal bracket in the top left-hand corner, uh, where you're looking on the iPod and it's got a clip right down at the bottom that you kind of pull outward and again this will also sometimes stick to the uh, piece that's underneath it so I'm just going to work underneath here and if you're not careful this thing will go flying across the room it's almost like it's spring loaded so you detach the clip from what would be the bottom uh, side of where we're looking now and then we've got just some old adhesive here and I'm going to move this out of the way so you can kind of see uh, how everything is situated we do have two more screws we're going to have to remove, and then this foil stuff, if you can take a look at the way I'm opening it up, we want to keep that intact to transfer over to the new screen. So this just kind of lifts straight up from that one on the bottom, and then the other side at the top there, I'm just kind of pushing it away so that it won't be stuck to anything. Go ahead and remove this screw from the logic board, and then the next one from the front-facing camera. And this logic board actually tucks in underneath that little white block that would be at the bottom left-hand corner from, uh, from uh, where you're looking at the iPod right now. So what we're going to do is use some heat. There, again, is going to be... Uh, oh, and also uh, make sure you loosen the main camera from its housing. I kind of just pull that up a little bit. Otherwise, it's also very easy to tear that flex cable when you lift up the logic board. And what we're going to do is heat this up. There's going to be some more adhesive underneath the main board and it is attached to the volume cable controls which I'm not going to remove from the iPod so this is the tricky maneuver we've got to get in here and basically lift this that direction so that it comes out from underneath that little white piece but again be very careful with the volume cables these are easy to tear and you can see I'm going to lift up pull it out from underneath that white piece just enough to where we can get access to the uh, flex cable for the digitizer and then I would not really recommend using anything like a screwdriver under here. It's easy to damage things where you can't see them. So a soft tool, pry tool, would be the best thing to do. We're going to go under there and just release that pop connector. And from this point, we're going to transfer some of the stuff here, this little pad, the gold piece, and then also the home button over to our new lens. So we'll move this out of the way for a minute. And what you're going to do is just apply some heat, um, to both of these areas, top and bottom. I like to start with the home button. And it's just got a little rubber gasket on the back that holds it in place with some adhesive. So you heat this up a little bit, and if you take your smallest finger or maybe something like a pencil and very slowly push on it, you don't want to tear that rubber piece. You just want to get it off of the glass all intact, and that will help seal out moisture and also keep the button from spinning around once you install it. So I'm going to transfer that straight over, but we're going to have to flip it so we can see the square. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to get this thing straight. So you really just kind of have to eyeball this. And if it doesn't go in straight the first time, you can pull it out and stick it on again. But this adhesive will start to wear after a while, so you don't want to take too many tries at it. Uh, but if you do have to, you might have to apply some new adhesive. Now, up here at the top, we've got a couple pieces that come off the digitizer flex cable. We've got this gold foil wrap stuff, and then we've got this other metallic pad not sure what the functionality is of these, but um, assuming that they are there for a reason, we're just going to lift them off and put them exactly in the same position on our replacement screen. Okay. 
Now this piece, I kind of got it a little bit crooked when I put it on the first time, so I am going to come back and straighten that out a little later on in the video. But the first thing we want to do is make sure that our screen is working. Oh, and there is one more thing, and that's this little metal piece. So it's got glass all over the back of it. We're going to have to clean that up, scrape it, get all the old adhesive and glass off, and then we'll put some new adhesive on here. Just some 3M double stick tape will work great. You don't want to use anything too thick. Uh, it's not very much room to work inside of the iPod, and if you put anything extra inside, it tends to make the lens lift up. So I'm just going to pry off all the old glass and then clean this surface and put some new adhesive on, and then we'll be ready to put this onto the new lens. And of course, if you're working with a razor blade and or broken glass, be very careful. It is easy to cut yourself. And we don't want to do that. And keep in mind, I am using a pre dulled razor blade. And you can see I've prepared this metal clip with some 3M adhesive. So we're just going to go ahead and peel off the wax paper. And you'll see two holes that are cut out. One is for the front facing camera, and the other is for the proximity sensor. And you can use those kind of as a guide so you'll be able to see where to line this up on the new lens. So if you take a look, it may not be visible in the video, but on the left-hand side, there is a circle if you hold it up to the light, and it's going to be kind of a blue spot there. And again, it's kind of hard to uh, get this on video, but you're going to match that up with that small hole and make sure everything goes straight right across, press that on, and that clip is going to help hold the top of the lens in place on the iPod. So I'm going to do a test run now, just plug in the digitizer and the LCD before we put any parts together. And you can see I'm going to kind of straighten that up a little bit. It is crooked. And then I'll go ahead and plug this in. And this is another somewhat awkward maneuver. You've got to plug this into the bottom of the logic board where it's very difficult to really look inside. And again, you don't want to put any stress on those volume cables. Very easy to tear. So there's just not a lot of room to work here. Uh, sometimes you can feel your way around, and if, you get, if you've done a few of these, they're not too tough, but the first time you might have some trouble getting this plugged in. So if you have to, you can flip it over and take a look at where the pop connector is located, but whatever you do, don't force anything. If you put too much pressure on these, you can damage them, and if you damage the pop connector on the logic board, that's it. You will not be able to use the iPod touchscreen anymore. Okay, so once we've got that plugged in, I'm going to feed this part kind of back under that little plastic piece. And sometimes you can uh, move the front facing camera out of the way so you can kind of get a little more access there. Um, so once we've got that in, and we will wrap that foil back around into the same position it was before we removed it. And then this is another part that's just really tricky. Uh, we'll lay this down where it's going to be eventually. There's not a lot of distance, not a lot of uh, leeway on this LCD flex cable, so it's a little tricky to get it plugged in without putting the whole thing together, so you just kind of have to work at this. I know that's not a very good camera angle, but um, there's no real easy way to explain this. You just have to work with it. And now when we get this plugged in, there's um, something that tends to happen because we couldn't power off the iPod. When you first plug it in, more than likely you're going to get a white screen. That's going to happen a lot of times anyways. And if the power button won't turn it on, uh, you can always plug it in with to uh, power supply, and it will sometimes be necessary to do that in order for the device to recognize the new screen. If you have the screen installed, you can do a hard reset, but that's not going to be possible with this one. Um, and we also have a passcode here, so I'm going to have to get that passcode so we can test all of the functionality before we put the adhesive in place. We want to make sure that everything's working properly before we stick it together. Once we're sure that everything's working properly, we're going to go ahead and turn this off and put the adhesive on. So we'll just open this back up and disconnect the LCD. And uh, of course we do need to put that metal plate back inside if you haven't already. And don't forget this metal clip here, it kind of tucks in at the top there, and if you push down there is a clip that will actually hold that in place, and that will stabilize the main camera. 
then we can go ahead and put the metal plate back on, put all our screws inside, and lay out all of our adhesive and get ready to put this back together. And if you want, you can always cut strips to go down the sides. I usually like to add those. Uh, the rest of it's kind of pre-made for the iPod, so these come in really handy. Make sure you punch out all of the little squares in there so that you'll have access to um, the screw holes, home button, and so forth. And this one's a little tricky. You got to kind of lift this up, move it out of the way. And again, remember that digitizer flex cable kind of goes in in an accordion shape. So it kind of goes back and forth there. If you can take a look at it, make sure you take the backing off of your LCD before you put this in. Once we install this, we really don't want to have to take it off again. So if you don't do it just right, you're going to kind of hate life. Um, now what we do is you tuck this in from the top. That little metal plate is going to latch underneath the top of the iPod. And then you just very carefully press along the sides. Don't put any pressure in the center of the screen. Make sure everything sits flush on here and that nothing starts peeling up. And again, you might get a white screen. If you do, you can do a hard reset with the power and the home button. When it powers on, you should be able to see the screen again. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel, share this with your friends, and have a good one.